everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well or if you've just stumbled across this video because of this specific topic. Hi, my name's Kate and I make videos on lifestyle, fashion, interiors, vlogs, being a mum, that kind of thing. But along with that goes something that um, affects me on my daily, every day, in my everyday life I guess. But it's something I haven't really spoken about much on my channel. I've been doing this for nearly 10 years um, and I've maybe done one or two videos on the topic and that is of course skincare, acne, acne scarring and how it makes you feel and basically this is going to be my journey of how I'm going to get rid of this problem I'm hoping. So this is obviously video one, it's a bit different from my channel so if you are a long time viewer I really hope you're interested in this but also if you are brand new then maybe click the subscribe button now because I'm going to be doing a video a month on this topic so I really really hope you enjoy it and you find it helpful so I'm going to give you a little bit of a brief background or story of me and my skin I did do a video about this about ages ago now probably six years ago um, and a lot's changed since and I've had two kids since then so I just wanted to kind of like yeah, give you an idea of my, me and my skin. I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about what I've been doing in the last month or two that's really kind of opened my eyes to skincare, what I was doing completely wrong and what I'm learning to do right, what I'm hoping to do over this next year, talk to you about some um, YouTubers and some just people that I've found along this journey so far of researching this topic so much who I love, who I'd love to recommend to you and also tell you about the products that I have been using and what I think of them so far. So there's a lot to pack in so let's get into it. So I'm 29, I'm going to be 30 this year and I've actually suffered with spots for about 20 years which just sounds ridiculous to me. I can't even believe that I'm actually not just 20. What? How, have my, how am I nearly 30? Probably when I was in primary school, the age of 9 or 10, I started to get spots. So I think I would get them like on, more on my forehead. Um, as I got older, into my teens, it obviously progressed and it turned into acne. Um, and I would primarily get it on my cheeks. This, is, this was the worst affected area, which I later learned was called cystic acne. There would be very sore, hot under the skin spots and also yellow heads, things like that. Um, which I used to come from home from school, like, take my makeup off and hold like cold bottles of water or frozen peas on my face because it's actually painful if you've never suffered with acne then I don't think people really think of it as something that's like, quite painful so not only does it affect you like mentally and your confidence it's also a bit, it hurts as well sometimes when it flares up so it's not nice so through my teens I tried different things like my mum and dad's you know I begged them to let me try like Clinique's three step program and all those you know expensive skincare routines that really we couldn't really afford but you know at a certain point so it would just make me cry I'd be absolutely devastated at the state of my skin so my parents would just try and do what they could to help me. Um, none of those things kind of worked because what I later learn and I'll go get into a bit more detail about this in a minute is that the kind of acne that I had was hormonal, it was cystic acne. It, it's very very difficult if not impossible I'm not a dermatologist so I don't know but it's very difficult for that kind of acne to, to clear up with like topical products um, maybe things have changed since back then that was like I don't know 15 years ago so things probably changed but yeah I was told back then that you know my acne wasn't gonna go because I put some three-step program stuff on my face so I tried different topical treatments from the doctor, from the GP, none of these really did much. So in the end I ended up seeing a dermatologist who put me on a drug called Roaccutane. It's also known as Accutane, I don't know if that's the American name for it or if the name has again changed since then because this was when I was about 15. Um, it's a very strong drug and it was the only thing that actually worked so I was on it for about a year first of all and it really did clear up my spots it took one tablet a day and by the time my it was actually my very last day of secondary school so I was 16 by this point was the first time this is so sad it was the first time I ever went to school without any makeup on the last day of school um, we did ha we just had our prom so I did actually have fake tan on and it was like bright on plump orange so looking back I obviously did have something covering up my face still but to me that was like 
a miracle to be able to go into school with no foundation on. Um, I'd never had the confidence to do that before, so that made me really happy. Over the next sort of year, I think it came back slightly because I remember taking another six month course of it and this seemed to really, really help. So Roaccutane or Accutane is a very strong, powerful drug. Um, it worked for me, but it's not without its side effects. Obviously you can't just go and get it from Boots, so I'm not recommending it to anyone or saying anyone should take it because obviously you would have to go through dermatologist to even be prescribed it. Um, but it does come with some quite scary, like, possible side effects. So first of all, aside from the side effects, you have to have a pregnancy test before you are allowed to go on it, um, and every time you get more, need to get more tablets. Um, that's because if you got pregnant whilst taking it, there are serious risks um, of your baby being deformed, and there's, it's really, really horrible. You, and there's a certain amount of time after it that you can't get pregnant as well, so it's such a strong drug. Um, so even at 15 I had to like have a pregnancy test done to kind of prove I wasn't pregnant which was weird for me at the time and also um, there are scary side effects, um, side effects which um, include in the worst possible case uh, links to suicide um, and I'm not 100% sure of all of the risks and the reasons why, I know it's a very small amount of people um, that have that their suicide has been linked to this drug but also I, I guess that could have been because they were already suicidal or that there's other factors involved I don't know again I'm not a dermatologist and I don't know all of all of the facts about this but it's something that we definitely considered being somebody that suffered with um, anxiety as a teenager it was something me and my family were worried about because we didn't want to make that worse. So it was something that worked for me and I will always be grateful um, to have been able to find that drug because it definitely gave me back a lot of my confidence. Um, fast forward years later, I had two children. During both my pregnancies, I had two boys, I have two boys. Um, my skin flared up quite badly, especially with my second pregnancy. Um, I got quite bad acne again. I remember before I had my second little boy um, using benzoyl peroxide and that was working really well. Um, and it's something I haven't actually used since. I stopped taking or using, it was a topical cream like gel. Um, when I got pregnant with him just because I was advised to by the doctor but after having him my skin has probably been the best it's ever been um, and that could, could just be my age growing out you'd hope by the age of nearly 30 you'd have grown out of teenage acne I would like to say that I have I definitely don't class myself now as having acne but I still do get breakouts so um, that leads me on to kind of where I am up to now if you have any more questions about what I've just told you, then just feel free to leave them in the comments box below. Um, but over the last, well, forever, as long as I can remember, but definitely over the last few months, I've been looking at my skin without makeup. I'm gonna take all my makeup off in a minute to show you. Um, and I've just kind of felt like, just really down about it because I've never felt comfortable enough to leave the house without foundation. And I think at the age of 30, after 20 years, of applying some kind of concealer cover-up or foundation that's really sad and I just want to put it out there right now that you should feel comfortable with however your skin is whether you have inflamed acne or you have clear skin to leave the house without makeup it's very hard for me to give that advice though when I don't feel confident enough to do that myself and I know that maybe I should just think I'm just gonna do it but I, I look at my face and I want to fix it, I want to be happy in my own skin and after years and years of consistent cystic acne I've been left with quite bad scarring and pigmentation and also when I get spots now and then they definitely scar me a lot longer than I feel like is average, like the, they last a long time the red marks. So I've been going on a bit of a journey of discovery to really learn about skincare and obviously I'm at the start of this, this is going to be my first video in which I hope this time next year I will have you know 12 videos and a process to kind of show you and to have as a playlist for people to look back on, that's my aim. Um, I've been looking into different treatments and through doing that I found different YouTubers and different people. So first of all I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the treatments that I've been looking into. I haven't had 
anything yet I've got a consultation tomorrow and then I'm also going to go and see another dermatologist so I have some appointments booked in which I'll keep you updated on um, those treatments that I've currently been able to find are um, obviously laser treatment for, for acne scarring and also um, micro needling which is basically the process of having loads of tiny little needles run over your face in different directions multiple times to um, help produce collagen in your skin which helps the acne scarring but I don't know anything yet until an expert looks at my skin and tells me what they think I should be doing basically so there's that. I'm really excited to see where that goes. I definitely think that I can try all of the lotions and potions and topical things out there and some which I love, I'm going to talk to you about in a minute, that are really working, sorry if it's a bit overexposed there, which are really working but they are never going to actually make the texture of my skin look better. I think at the stage I'm at now I need more than that. So that's why I'm going down that route. A few people that I found on, mainly here on YouTube, that have been just like a fountain of information for me. I've just been watching all their videos and just like, I love you, you're so amazing. Um, I just wanted to share them with you now. So the first one is probably the first person that I found talking about this who I really related to. Um, and that is a lady called Sarah. I think her Instagram's called Sarah Skin Story. She is like me, she suffered with acne, left with acne scars, and she's actually gone through a whole process of basically teaching herself how to microneedle her own face, and she did it, did it once a month for a long time, and she says she's seen amazing results, as well as lots of other stuff. She's very knowledgeable about skincare, uh, without being like an actual dermatologist. So whilst right now I'm way too scared to take a needle to my face, I'm not saying it's something I may not consider in the future, but she's so like skilled skilled at it and she's completely taught herself the the best safest way to do it so she's she's really great to watch and she uses different topical products and the transformation in her skin is amazing while still loving the loving herself even if she does get a spot because she's also very open and honest to say that just because she's really clear to her skin and her acne scars she still gets spots and i think that's just a great message to still be comfortable with the skin that you're in Someone else I recently found who is just like one of my new favourite people, he's called Hiram and it's so weird, so I, I don't know if everyone is feeling like me at the moment and it's just a weird coincidence but basically he's a skincare expert, he lives in Hawaii and he just makes the most amazing helpful content around skincare and I've just been literally loving everything he says and I started following him about a month ago and I think he had maybe 150-ish thousand subscribers and now he's nearly on 600,000 it's like everyone found him when I found him and so I'm really like in awe of him and proud of him even though he has no idea who I am and I don't know him but he is amazing um, I will also I'll link all of these people below and then also someone I've recently started watching on YouTube is called Dr Dre she is a dermatologist so she has like all of the expert knowledge um, and she just clearly knows exactly what she's talking about so she's been a great person to watch as well so if this is an area of concern for you whether it's acne or just you want amazing skin skincare in general and skin watch these people's videos and if you have any more people that you want to recommend to me and anyone else please leave them in the comments because I'm just loving watching these videos at the moment so what I'm going to do now before I talk you through some products that I love is actually just bare my skin, I, I just need to do it um, obviously I've done videos where we've done like morning routines before and videos where I've spoken about products um, and Instagram stories where I've shown you applying products but what I've kind of realised is that you still don't see someone's full skin like if they're further away from the camera or even on my phone I've been trying to take photos of my skin and I feel like even just on the iPhone camera there's some kind of filter on it because my skin looks smoother just on the camera with no filter than it does in real life. I mean I know it's a camera it's not an eye but it just looks like it's been smoothed which is annoying because I'm trying to now take photos of my actual skin. So I feel like you never really see what someone's true skin is like even if they're standing in front of you on Instagram or in a video like right now you could think my skin is totally clear but obviously I have makeup on there's lighting and 
I'm standing far away from the camera. So let me stop procrastinating any longer. Let's do this. Oh, God. So I might as well talk to you about one of my favourite products that's been a long term, long time favourite product whilst I'm doing this because I'm going to be using it, using it and it is the Garnier Micellaire Cleansing Water. So let me come closer. Okay, I've actually just switched over to my smaller vlogging camera. I thought I would use a DSLR because it would show things in better and more detail. But maybe I was wrong, it wouldn't quite zoom in as much as I wanted it to. So I've taken all of my makeup off. Um, and obviously I know that, probably from what you can see from here, it's not loads of active acne that is my concern now, it's more the scarring. But if I'd have shown you, if I'd have done this two weeks ago, I'd have had not one active spot on my face, it would have all just been scarring. I'm gonna put some pictures up of what it was like. But hormones happened and I had a breakout of about 10 spots at once, which is quite unusual for me now, but they're all quite bad. Like I have this one here. And then I got loads under my neck. So that really frustrates me because I'm still getting spots. It's not like I don't get them anymore. Um, but my main issue, I'm going to zoom in on now, is the scarring. Hopefully that shows it quite well. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of scarring. And scars have different names. Um, there's ice pick scars. And there's about five different like types still quite a lot of redness and pigmentation and my nose is really bad as well I have a lot of um, what they called sebaceous filaments in my nose um, and I've learned a lot about pore size as well and the fact that you can't really change your pore size so that's quite frustrating um, but yeah this is what my skin is currently looking like month one of this kind of video I guess it's like a video diary um, Right, so I think I'm just going to finish off filming this video here because the lighting in my office has now gone really yellow and I wanted to do this in the best lighting possible. So I wanted to talk about some products that I've been loving over the last month to six weeks. I don't think any of these are things that have broken me out. I think, as I said, it's just like hormones um, because my skin was reacting to them really well before. Um, so please don't be, be put off by that. Also, I wanted to admit something which is not great, but basically before I was so scared of my skin breaking out, there are only like a few products that I would try. I like, I love products from Freshly Cosmetics. They seem to work really well with my skin and a few other brands. But on most evenings, a lot of evenings, if I wasn't doing like a full skincare routine and doing a bit of a pamper, I would literally just take my makeup off because I was so scared of my skin breaking out that I didn't want to try loads of new things. Um, and it just kind of pains me that I was doing that, that before because something I've definitely learned over the last month or two is that you need to double cleanse because if you're just removing your makeup, you're not actually cleaning your skin. So it's been something I've been doing every single day um, since this kind of hallelujah moment kind of hit me like obviously I, I knew about double cleansing before I knew I should be doing it but I just wasn't so I remove all my makeup as I said with the Garnier micellaire water micellar water everyone says it differently um I've been through bottles and bottles and bottles of this stuff it's it removes my makeup perfectly it's really gentle and it's great for that first step for me of getting everything off and then I've been using um, this Emma Hardy Moringa Cleansing Balm. Now, if you already follow Hiram, who I was talking about earlier, he would probably like recoil in horror about this because it's quite um, a fragranced product. Um, but, so I do kind of agree that a lot of fragrance in skincare probably isn't that great. Um, unless you, I do have quite sensitive skin, so unless you don't have sensitive skin, then you should probably use things without that much fragrance in. However, my skin does seem to really be loving this, and it feels so much nicer when I use it. So it's like um, a balm, like this, and it goes on really smoothly. It smells incredible. It smells like you're having a little spa pamper experience every single evening, um, and then you can just remove it with a muslin cloth. I really like it. It may not be the best thing to do my double cleanse with. Maybe I'll go on to something different throughout the next few months. But I want to use this up. It's an expensive product and I love it. So 
we'll see how we go with that but I would definitely recommend this if you want a really nice cleansing balm this is the one to go for a brand that I found out about again in recent months that I am now absolutely loving is the ordinary now the ordinary their products are very they seem like quite clinical it actually says on the packaging clinical formulations with integrity that is the perfect way to describe this brand so everything kind of tells you exactly what ingredients are in it instead of hiding behind like a name sort of um uplifting cleanser for oily skin which you don't really know what products are in it unless you dive deep into the ingredients list which by the way we should all be doing this one just gives you the ingredients list like straight up there on the front so these are two completely different products. I'll talk to you first about this one, which is the Ordinary AHA 30% plus BHA 2% peeling solution. This for me is probably like the strongest um, chemical peeling type product I've ever used on my skin. I used to scrub my skin with like an actual gritty scrub. I don't do that at all anymore because I've learned it's not the best thing for your skin and it's much better to use like a chemical exfoli exfoliant so you're not actually scratching at your skin. Um, this stuff actually burns quite a bit <laughs> but I only use it once a week. Pro I've probably used it four times in the last two months so it's probably been more every two weeks because I like to give my skin a break from this, um, but I will start using it once a week because my skin doesn't have a bad reaction to it. So this, I think, is an incredible product. I've got some uh, photos of it on. It looks like you've rubbed blood into your face, um, which isn't that pleasant, but you leave it on for 10 minutes and then you wash it off and your skin feels so incredibly smooth after it. Oh, and the price points of the ordinary products are incredible. Skincare can be so expensive, but the, this is like six or seven pounds. It's amazing. I'll link everything I've mentioned in the description box below for you. Then, um, this is the ordinary niacinamide 10% plus zinc 1%. I have just heard the word niacinamide so many times over the last month or so. Um, it's meant to be great for blemishes, reducing redness, pores. It's just meant to be an amazing product. Now, it's something that you have to use for quite a long period of time before you see any results. And I started using this not that long before I had this breakout, so it's kind of freaked me out, but it's meant to do the opposite. So I'm gonna continue, once my skin calms down a bit, I'm gonna continue to use it and just go easy on it and see how it works because all I hear is like this stuff is incredible. Again, it's about five or six pounds. Um, I, but I haven't seen that yet, so it's something that I've incorporated into my skincare routine, but I haven't seen the benefits of it yet. But let me know in the comments below if you use niacinamide. I would love to get your thoughts on this. Um, and then I also have a product that I've had for a long time. Um, again, may not be the best product, I'm still learning, but it my, my skin seems to really like it. And this is the Philosophy Purity Moisturiser. Um, by looking on the back, it doesn't really have any scary ingredients in it. I really like this moisturiser. As you can see, I've used a lot of it. It has never broke me out or given me any bad reactions. It feels really nice. It absorbs really quickly. It's great under makeup. Um, it smells nice, but nothing too over overpowering. It just smells really clean. Um, I love it. So... I would actually really recommend this one. There are a couple of other products that I have ordered. So obviously I can't give you any feedback on them yet, but I will put some pictures of them here. So the first thing is the Zit Sticker. Um, don't know if this is a gimmicky product or not, but people are really raving about it. They were fairly expensive, but I found a discount code um, on Instagram. So I used that. Um, if I can find it, I'll let you know. It's not my discount code, but if I can find one, I'll let you know because it gives you like 15% off at the moment. Um, and also, um, Paul, a Paula's Choice SPF. So I've been looking for a good SPF because this is what I've also been learning that if we're not applying SPF every single day, all of the other steps don't really matter because as Hiram says, um, sun damage accounts for 90% of like your skin like your skin aging and problems with your skin, like pigmentation and loads of stuff. Um, so I really need to be using an SPF. Like I'm not using a daily facial SPF at all, which is awful. Um, so 
uh, I need to try one. So I'm trying the Paula's Choice one because I, I believe it's a mineral SPF. And again, I've just always been terrified of putting um, a facial sun sunscreen on because they just seem so thick and perfumed. They sting my eyes, they make my eyes run and they break me out. So I just stayed away from using them. So I need to find something that works for me. So again, any suggestions, let me know. I just want to become more knowledgeable in the topic. I want to help my skin. Um, I want to go on this journey with you guys and hopefully in turn help some of you along the way. This is just going to hopefully run alongside all of my other content. So nothing's going to change. It's just going to be a monthly update. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. It feels like this was all a, a little bit all over the place, but it feels very, um, I don't know, therapeutic for me to have done this so thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it i would love for you to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already to follow along on this journey and i will see you in another video very soon bye guys <music>